The interesting thing about abalone research is it has to be done during typically the coldest months of the year. It's really not for the faint of heart, but you get in there, you get the job done. You end up getting rewarded with seeing these baby abalone that you put out a whole year before and wished luck. And then you go back and you see them crawling around and thriving in the spot that you handpicked for them. We only have one species of abalone here in Washington state. That's the pinto abalone. It's a large marine snail. Pinto abalone serve a really important role, both culturally and ecologically here in the Pacific Northwest. Indigenous people have had a close connection and relationship with these animals for many, many generations. Pinto abalone are the unsung heroes of the kelp ecosystem. They're really important as ecosystem engineers. Their active grazing behavior on those rocky reef habitats really support the ability of other species to come in and also utilize that clean substrate. And that includes settlement of invertebrates and things like bull kelp. And that bull kelp then serves to provide habitat for bait fish and other small fish that might serve as a food source for salmon. And salmon, of course, support orcas. We had a state fishery for them from 1959 to 1994. In 1994, WDFW noticed that their populations were in decline, and so they shut down the fishery. We've seen a 97% decline in abalone populations in Washington since the early 1990s. Pinto abalone have not been able to rebound themselves. They were overfished to a population that was not self-sustaining anymore. It's been pretty clear that human intervention is going to be necessary to see the species recovery. Our goal is to try to bring those back in a way that we've created self-sustaining spawning populations on that rocky reef habitat. Ideally to the point where we can take a step back and move on from this process of human intervention and just see abalone spawning and, and growing and recruiting naturally on their own. Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and Puget Sound Restoration Fund have been partners and co-led this mission for over 20 years now. The only way that this work has been able to be accomplished is from our list of amazing partners. Universities, state agencies, federal agencies, tribes, nonprofit organizations. This group of partners has really set out to do the research to determine what strategies would be best to see this species come back from the brink. Creating and running a conservation aquaculture program for pinto abalone is our top strategy for recovering the species. Puget Sound Restoration Fund collaborates directly with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife to run this hatchery program. Our goal is to take broodstock abalone from the wild, bring those into a hatchery environment, and produce healthy, genetically diverse offspring. And these juvenile abalone that are produced in the hatchery can then be brought out to recovery sites in the wild. Since 2009, we've established 36 different recovery sites, and that covers most of the San Juan Islands. We've started doing some outplanting work in both Skagit and uh, island counties as well. To date, we've seeded almost 60,000 juveniles to these 36 recovery sites. And the animals that leave the hatchery uh, actually represent 250 genetically distinct families. And that's been really important to us in our program, is to really maintain genetic diversity in the animals that we're putting out there into the wild. It gives us a huge amount of hope to see these little guys succeed at the places that we've put them. Going back a year later and seeing the abalone that you put out with the same tag on it that you placed on it in the hatchery, scurrying around the rocks and with a bunch of other abalone that you put out, I think it's very promising for the future of their story. 
We're feeling really confident in the strategies that we've developed. We've laid some foundational groundwork over the last almost two decades now. The legislative support that we've received recently has really allowed us to build out teams across our partners. To really scale up, I think it takes adding to that collaboration. We need more dive teams, we need more boats on the water, we need more partners kind of taking on bits and pieces of the work, and that's happening. We have a real chance of restoring this species in Washington State. If we can restore a marine snail that is hard to find, that we only have so much time to spend with based on the scuba tanks on our back, if we can restore this species, who's to say that we can't restore other endangered species in Washington State?